Would you like to be a real estate baron without dealing with mortgages, tenants, or vacancies? Want to instantly own a portfolio of high quality properties all over the United States? Like the idea of collecting big rent checks while doing none of the work? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel. I'd really appreciate it. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business owns a suite of properties in hot urban markets all across the United States. You know what they say about real estate, location, location, location. Well, this company owns properties in only the hottest urban markets in the United States that have historically had the most demand. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. Best of all, the stock looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I wanna share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Federal Realty Investment Trust, which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Federal Realty Investment Trust, stock ticker FRT, is an equity real estate investment trust that owns and manages real estate in eight major U.S. markets with a focus on shopping centers. Founded in 1962, their portfolio of over 100 properties features over 3,000 tenants, 24 million square feet, and 2,700 residential units. Their eight markets are New York City, Philadelphia, Boston, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Miami, Los Angeles, and Silicon Valley. Washington, D.C. is their largest market by number of properties. As of December 31st, 2019, they had a 94.2% lease rate and an occupancy rate of 92.5%. The REIT primarily focuses on mixed-use urban properties and grocery-anchored shopping centers. When you look at their properties, it's clear that Federal Realty has concentrated itself in some of the most desirable U.S. markets where high-income households with disposable income are prevalent. The stock price at over $140 a share as recently as October 2019 reflected a ton of optimism. The sky is now falling, people are scared, and the stock's price is now below $80 a share. You don't need me to tell you which price is more attractive. While the near-term prospects for businesses in general aren't great, the pandemic is currently still in full swing, it's not like Federal Realty's properties have suddenly disappeared or become worthless. Those properties will drive rental income for years to come, as well as dividends. Speaking of which, Federal Realty has one of the most impressive dividend growth track records in existence. The company has increased its dividend for 52 consecutive years. There are less than 30 companies in the S&P 500 that have increased dividends for 50 or more years. Federal Realty is the only REIT to have done so. The 10-year dividend growth rate is 4.6%, which is solid. Moreover, the much lower price has led to a much higher starting yield. The stock yields 5.6%. That's borderline insane for the quality here. For perspective, the stock's five-year average yield is 3%. We're talking about a spread of 260 basis points. The payout ratio at 67% of trailing 12 months funds from operations per share is on the conservative side for REITs, indicating one of the more safe dividends in all of real estate. However, that payout ratio is a backward looking metric and Federal Realty, like pretty much every other REIT, has been suffering and collecting far less than 100% of billed rents. The company recently announced that it has collected less than 60% of May's billed rent ahead of April, but still not great. On the other hand, this is no news and the near-term issues have pushed the stock's valuation down significantly. This isn't the super safe dividend that say Microsoft Corporation offers, but you're also getting that high yield. Looking at business growth, Federal Realty grew its revenue from $545 million to $936 million in fiscal year 2019. That's a compound annual growth rate of 6.19%, which is great. However, we have to keep in mind that a REIT is legally obligated to pay out at least 90% of taxable income in the form of a dividend, limiting the amount of capital it can retain to fund growth. A REIT typically issues debt and shares to fund growth. The dilutive nature of share issuance means it's extremely important to look at growth on a per share basis with any REIT. And it's not earnings per share we're looking at, rather it's funds from operations. 
FFO is a measure of cash generated by a REIT, which adds depreciation and amortization expenses back to earnings. The company grew its FFO a share from $3.90 to $6.17 over this 10-year period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 5.23%. FFO a share almost kept up with absolute revenue growth. I think this is a very reasonable rate of per share growth, especially when you're pairing it with that starting yield of over 5%. Looking forward, CFRA believes the REIT will compound its funds from operations per share growth at a rate of 15% over the next three years. I almost wonder if that's a typo because there's nothing indicating that the company will be able to muster that. Federal Realty has one of the best real estate track records you'll find, there's no question about it. However, the pandemic has been a severe headwind. Rental collection has been challenged like never before, and I think that will weigh on results for years to come. I wouldn't expect much, if any, growth over the next few years. But as an investor who's always thinking about decades into the future, I think Federal Realty is positioned about as well as anyone in real estate. And they simply don't need to produce heaps of growth to produce acceptable total return. That's because the yield, relative to the rate environment, is so high. The big question though is the sustainability of the dividend, at least in the near term. And that will play out over the next 6 to 12 months. Moving over to the balance sheet, Federal Realty has one of the best balance sheets in the entire industry. They have $4.3 billion in total liabilities against $6.8 billion in total assets. It's an A-rated balance sheet, sporting an A- from Standard & Poor's and an A3 from Moody's. And with no tenant comprising more than 3% of annualized base rent, their balance sheet risk has been managed well. There's a lot to like about Federal Realty, especially if you're looking for more exposure to real estate. It's one of the highest quality REITs out there, yet the stock has been beaten to a pulp. This has created a rare opportunity in terms of valuation. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Real estate is highly cyclical. Tenant health and demand for real estate are dependent on the broader economy. With the recession upon us, real estate demand will be depressed in the near term. As a REIT, due to the capital structure, they must consistently rely on external funding. This can compound problems in recessions, since the return on equity issuance, when prices are down, is often much lower. And Federal Realty has concentrated itself in a way that many other REITs have not. Their markets have historically been among the strongest in the United States, but a near-term flee from urban centers will put stress on demand. Even with these risks in mind, Federal Realty still looks like a promising long-term investment. And with the 40% year-to-date drop in stock price, the valuation makes it look even more promising. The stock is trading hands for a price to funds from operations ratio of 12. The P to FFO ratio is analogous to the more common PE ratio. That's incredibly low for a quality business, and it's obviously well below the broader market's earnings multiple. We can look also at straight cash flow. The stock's price to cash flow ratio at 11.9 is almost half that of the stock's three-year average P to CF ratio of 20. And the yield, as noted earlier, is significantly higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in an 8% discount rate to account for the high yield and a long-term dividend growth rate of 3%. That dividend growth rate is on the very low end of what I normally account for, but I think this is a case that warrants that kind of caution. Federal Realty's dividend growth was slowing even before the pandemic. The last dividend increase was about 3%. And the recent difficulties with collecting rent do not engender enthusiasm. Plus, there's been the more recent fleeing from urban U.S. markets. I think the long-term prospects remain very strong, but near-term results will likely weigh on the stock price and overall dividend growth. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $86.52. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates FRT as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $100. CFRA rates FRT as a three-star hold with a 12-month target price of $85. My valuation was extremely close to where CFRA is at. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $90.51, which would indicate the stock is possibly 20% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Federal Realty Investment Trust is a high quality company that has concentrated itself in only the most in-demand markets. With a rare track record over 50 consecutive years of dividend raises, a yield of well over 5%, 
a moderate payout ratio, and the potential that shares are 20% undervalued, this could be your opportunity to get a great deal on a quality stock while the sky is falling and the valuation has been punished. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on new content. Also, be sure to check the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over at Patreon, and I also post alerts over there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if this sounds like something you think you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alert. I'll see you next time.